Hey guys, it's Doc Junji and I'm back with another video. This one comes a little bit close to the heart because uh, I'm gonna be sharing with you the top 5 misconceptions that people have with emergency medicine physicians. So, stick around. Counting it down backwards style in this one, here's number 5. Emergency physicians have no specialties. Well, this is not true because uh, emergency medicine is a specialty. Hindi po kami under ng ibang department. We deal with patients at the emergency room. Mapabata man yan, buntis, nabalian ng buto, masakitan siyan, nahulog sa maling tao, o kung ano pa man yung problema mo sa buhay. Basta nasa ER ka, pwede kang tingnan ng EM. And if there's one thing or one condition that EMs specialize in, that would be shock. Now, what is shock. The answer to this is a long discussion, pero to simplify, this is the process that the body undergoes once critical na yung patient. Ito yung pagkamalapit na mamatay yung pasyente. And that's where emergency medicine physicians specialize in. Specialty ng mga EM na ma-recognize yung shock early and how to treat it para maiwasan mamatay yung pasyente. Number 4. Ito, madalas ko ito naririnig from everyone. Glorified GPs ang mga EM. Well, unang-una, what's wrong with being a general practitioner? Doctor ka pa din naman, di ba? Being a GP isn't something na to be ashamed of or something to look down to. Hirap kaya maging GP. Nasubukan ko to actually nung nag-moonlight ako. Like, di ko alam kung anong i-handle ko. Pwedeng pumasok dyan bata, pwedeng fracture, pwedeng kung ano-ano pa. Just look at it this way. Pag specialized ka, you can say na I'm the best at this thing, organ, or procedure. Pero pag GP ka, you can say that I'm great with a lot of things. That being said, pag EM ka, technically, you should be able to handle any kind of patients. Again, kasi sabi ko na kanina, bata, matanda, fracture, whatever. You, you should be able to handle it. Parang GP. Pero, you have the knowledge and the training that's more than that of a general practitioner. Parang ganito, pag GP ka, kaya mo mag-intubate, kaya mo magtubo ng pasyente. Pero, kapag EM ka, Hindi ka lang basta magtutubo. Alam mo kung paano mag-rapid sequence, alam mo kung ano yung pre-medications yung dapat mo ibigay, alam mo kung dapat mo ba talagang tubuhan in the first place, alam mo yung tamang approach, alam mo kung ano yung, dap ano yung mga dapat mong gawin. As an EM, you should be able to do everything pero at a higher level. Higher level than a GP. Kasi you've undergone 4 more years of training than a GP. Number 3, forever duty ka pag EM, parang clerk pa rin yung sked mo. Well, yes. EMs go on duties. Most kids are 24-hour duties. Pero you get to pick the days when you want to go on duty or not. Like for example, kung gusto mo mag 3 days straight duty, eh di go. Kung kaya mo mag, mag 3 days eh, di pa sked mo na 72 hours duty ka. Kung benign naman yung hospital na pinag duty mo, eh, why not? Diba? Then, mag-off ka ng 4 straight days. Pwede yun sa EM. So, four straight days kang nga nga lang, tulala lang. You can do whatever you want. Or you can go on duty sa other hospital. Or you can play golf. Or you can play basketball. Or if you're like me, you can make videos for YouTube. Four straight days, pwede kang walang gawin. Pwede yun sa EM. And don't get me wrong, with the salaries that EM consultants get, you can afford to have four days off. Lalo na kung toxic as a person. Also, being on duties like that, it's not that bad. Why? Dahil alam mo kung kailan ka lang magpapasyente. Unlike other specialties, pwede kang gisingin ng residents mo in the middle of the night para mag-refer sa'yo ng pasyente, kung mag-toxic yung patient mo, kung may bago kang admission. Anytime pwede ka na nang tawagan. Kahit natutulog ka, kahit nasaan ka. Kung may emergency OR ka, kahit 2 a.m., gigising ka pa rin para pumunta sa hospital. Pwede nga sa bahay ka nga, hindi ka nga duty. Tawag man ang tawag sa yung residente mo. Eh di wala din. Sana nag-duty ka na lang, di ba? Tawag din naman siya ng tawag. Hindi na nung na lang. Ikaw na mismo yung nakakita, di ba? Sa EM kasi, pag tapos na yung duty mo, tapos na yon. Di mo na kailangan balikan yung pasyente mo para i-rounds, para i-admit, or para i-OR, or whatever. Next misconception is, nagpapasa lang ng trabaho ang EM. Hindi totoo yan. Kahit ano pang sabihin ng mga senior nyo, sa inyo, nung clerk kayo, nung intern kayo, hindi totoo yan. Sa totoo, sa totoo lang, EM ang first touch talaga sa mga hospitals with an ideal setup. Uh, then, sila'y magmanage sa ER. Then, when stable na and deemed for admission, 
sakalang tatawag ng consultants from the appropriate department to admit the patient. Here in the Philippines kasi, usually, hindi ganito yung setup. Ano, well, ano ba namang ideal sa healthcare system natin dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? Usually, meron ding mga residents ang other departments na nakapost sa ER. Kailangan din nila ng cases. Kaya ang nangyayari, first touch ang EM, then uh, ipapalaboratory, initial management, then saka i-refer sa ibang departments. In some hospitals, may mga agreement minsan yung mga department kung sino dapat, kung sino yung mag-first touch on certain patients. Like, for example, if limb injury, or so agad yan. Or pag-18 below, triad siya agad to pedia. Next one is, madali lang mag-EM. Dati, from the outside, looking in, nung clerk ako, nung intern ako, naisip ko to. Pag nakikita ko yung mga EM na nakaupo lang, tas pagod na pagod yung residente ko sa pag-admit ng pasyente, parang ang dali lang mag-EM, no? Nakaupo lang siya dun. Kanina pa siya nakaupo doon, wala siyang ginagawa. Parang ganun yung nakikita mo. Parang madali lang mag-EM. Pero, ngayon, I'm doing emergency medicine stuff. Di ko na naiisip yun. Ang hirap eh. <laughs> Ang hirap talaga. Mahir mahirap siya if you're the one doing it na and you're not just someone from the outside looking in. First of all, bago makuha ng ibang departments yung pasyente na yun para i-admit nila, EM ang usually unang nakakita nun. May it be for initial management or at least sa triage pa lang, nakita na yan ng EM. And EM yung nag-decide kung ilalagay ba yan sa critical bay, ilalagay ba yan sa uh, ambulatory care lang yan o sa kung saan man or urgent lang yan, bibigay mo ba yan sa trauma agad o IM mo na yan, EM ang nag-decide nun. And for those patients na critical or in shock or nagko-code or wala ng heartbeat, 90% of the time, EM ang unang makakita at makakamanage niyan. Pag umabot yung mga pasyente na yun to the point na pwede na silang i-admit, most of the time, that means na itawid na sila from the brink of death tapos doon na papasok yung hirap ng pagiging IM or other specialties. Yung pag-admit and maintaining the stability of the patient. Everybody has a role in the hospital, especially sa ER. Every specialty has gaps. Every specialty has blind spots that other specialties cover. And that's why healthcare it's not a one-man or one-department job. Ang healthcare, collaborative effort yan from different specialties. No specialty is better than another. Naniniwala ako dito. Some are just more suitable para sa pasyente during a specific time. And that's why sa ER, more than any other place sa hospital, kailangan-kailangan talaga yung teamwork. And I think that's the most unique thing that EMs do. Making sure that the team is working together and doing so efficiently. Mapa nurse man yan, mapa IM, mapa pedia, mapa surgery, mapa ENT, ortho. That's one one part of what EMs do is coordinating coordinating certain patients with a lot of different de departments. That's one thing that EMs do sa ER that no other uh, specialties does does do. No other specialty do da do does do do. Duh, 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 duh. Balak na. Also, guys, a quick shout out to my batchmates, Dr. Alvin Francisco, Dr. Dexter Makalintal. Two of my batchmates started vlogging na, guys. Dalawa, tatlo na kami. Tatlo na kami. Sobrang, sobrang good influence ko talaga. Oh my gosh. Subscribe to his channel. I leave, I leave links down in the description for both of them. Uh, check out their channels. A lot of good contents from those guys. Actually, I got the idea for, for this video from uh, Alvin. So, Watch out for future collabs with those guys. Uh, again, check out their channels down in the description. It has been me, Doc Junji, still ang tropa mong residente. Thank you for watching. If you like this one, check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one. Bye, guys.